Hey guys, welcome to this week's Money Investing Show. This week we're doing something a little bit different. This is a preview of our new book, The Wealth Playbook. This has been something I've been writing now over the course of this year. It's a, a huge milestone in terms, as you're going to hear in this particular interview, with what we're doing as an organization and more importantly, how we're going to be able to help you. Make sure you pre-order your copy of The Wealth Playbook at www.thewealthplaybook.com.au. Most importantly, check out what we've got to say in this interview and uh, enjoy the content. Hey guys, welcome to this week's Money and Investing Show with me, your host, Andrew Baxter, and as always, my offsider and co-host, Mitchell Lorenzo. Usually I'm the one excited on a podcast, AB, but today I suspect it's probably going to be you and our viewers out there because we're talking about your new book, The Wealth Playbook. How exciting. <laughs> Indeed, yes. It's come to fruition after a little bit of time up on the ramp and thinking about it. We got pen to paper this year and uh, yeah, it's it's published this week. So very, very well, excited. First off, congratulations to you. And I know a lot of our Thank viewers you. for our podcast will find so much value in this book. And today mm. we're going to break it down, give them a little bit of a sneak peek on what they expect. <laughs> oh, look, it's, it's uh, jam-packed with great content. I mean, it's uh, it's it's been a real challenge and I guess I'll talk a bit about some of the challenges uh, uh, to, to write it in, the, in a few moments. But I guess, you know, it's a special time for me, not because of the book, but I'm just about to tick over. It's my 25th anniversary of living here in Australia and, you know, I've done a lot of soul searching on that. It's been a very good 25 years for me and my family and uh, chatting with my wife to look, what are you going to do to celebrate it? What are you going to give back? Because it's been very good. What are you going to give back? And so we've decided as an organization, uh, this is our give back year. 2024 will be our give back year. And, uh, and this book is just part of that. And I guess, in essence, what I've tried to do is is distill down 25 years worth of lessons that I've had having, I don't know, we've had the opportunity to speak to literally hundreds and hundreds of thousands of people around the world, everyday people looking to get ahead, people that are already on the journey getting ahead and uh, and provide them with some tools, some skills, some coaching, some help uh, to solidify that journey into wealth. So, yeah, I thought, how can I put this into uh, into a playbook that people can follow? So I guess, you know, that's how the whole thing started. Well, before we go into what's actually included in the book as a sneak peek, let's just talk about the actual process of of writing this, AB. Mm -hmm. You mentioned 2024 is the give back year, and I know a big part of your mission at the moment is in regards to legacy. Mm -hmm. How does the book fit that? Look, I I, I think it fits well. I mean, through through Australian investment education particularly, which has been a a trading education business now for, for decades, you know, our, our goal has been really simple. It's to empower everyday people to be able to make better quality financial decisions where they have more control, uh, they've got more understanding of the outcome, and they're more informed with what's going on ultimately with their money, uh, with the overall goal of, of helping them sort of touch down at the spot in life that they deserve based on the action plan they've got. And uh, and I, I guess what I wanted to do with the book is to do something similar, but across a, a broader area than just simply the trading and investing space, because important as that is to both generate cash flow and, and capital growth and, and build wealth, there are a myriad of other things that are as important. And, and trying to wrap that up uh, is, is, is where I kind of started. And so legacy for sure uh, is that you know, the, the style, the nature in which I wanted to write the book was to say, look, if I were to give my kids something to read that would help them manage and steward the money they're gonna have, what would it be? How would you lay it out? Um, would it be really theory driven? Would it be more practical driven? Um, would it have action steps in there? Would it require you know, further learnings? All of those sorts of things, which um, you know, are big sort of marker points, I think, when you go to write anything. Now, you mentioned the style and the nature of the book. And just for our listeners out there, I mean, if you're keen as mustard, like probably most of you are, thewealthplaybook.com.au is where you can grab a copy of this or pre-order. Yep. The The nature of the book is Australian focused. And the beauty of it from, from reading the sort of the, the, the draft copies is that it's very easy to understand and it's applicable to any stage of your life. Can you talk, talk yeah. to us more about that? that. That was really important for me because I think just like we've done with, with Australian investment education, I think we've built our reputation on speaking plain English, avoiding jargon and, and providing a, a, a service which takes the complexities of financial markets and trading and distills it down into bite-sized chunks that you know, pretty much anyone can follow. And I think anecdotally, we've had tens of thousands of people go through our programs they can understand it. Anyone can pick the ball up and run with it. And I guess the biggest challenge with, you know, particularly the space of financial planning or life planning, if you wanted to use that particular skin for it, is oftentimes it's an industry that's well and truly overloaded 
with jargon and technical terms, you know, TPD, okay, total permanent disability or binding death nomination, what's that? These are terms that are banded around in the industry. And for a lot of people, they feel quite intimidated. They might sit down with a financial planner and hear these sort of terms banded around and, and not be sure what it is. And then you just get sucked into the vortex of just saying yes to whatever's coming from the financial planner, which oftentimes is a, a sales process to try and flog you as many products as is humanly possible. And I think people deserve a little bit more than that. They do deserve to understand, um, not necessarily in intricate detail, but certainly from a big picture perspective, exactly what all these components, what all these pieces of the Jukil puzzle are, and why they're so important and why they relate to each other. So, you know, keeping it in very, very simple, plain English terms uh, was, was something that was really important to me because I want anybody to be able to access this. I think, secondly, that notion of the typical financial planning model, let's face it, the Royal Commission showed the Australian financial planning, I don't get my haters for saying this, but it's a statement of fact, you can Google it. Um, you know, the, the Australian Royal Commission that we had into the financial planning uh, business and banking Royal Commission here in Australia showed that to a large extent, uh, the financial planning industry was motivated by greed and fees and, and, and inappropriate products and, and really a fee for no service. And it's it's very, very, very well documented. That's not me having a beat up on that industry. It's, it's just what it is. Yeah. And so part of what I wanted to do by being able to educate people was that rather than them sit in a room and have a financial planner sell them something, they've got an understanding of what they need so they can become a buyer. And there's a huge difference between being sold something and being a buyer that knows what they want. Because number one, it means you get the things that you need. But number two, you can also be quite discerning when it comes to the fees that you're going to be charged. So to give you an example of this, and this is just staggering, and these are some of the things that you discover on the way through as you're doing your research and, and so on for your book. Um, a 1% difference in fees between service providers. So if you're paying 1% more than somebody else, that could stack up to around 10 years of retirement savings difference that you've had to make. So 10 years of contributions to your retirement plan wiped out just on a 1% variation in fees that you might be paying. It sounds so insignificant, but when you put it into terms, it's huge. Well, these are long-term investments. So if you think about, for example, superannuation, and for most people, you know, retirement and super is, you know, 20, 30, 40 years away in some instances, uh, longer in others. And if you don't take care of business and you get caught up on something that's a higher fee-based model, and you didn't realize that, it just seemed to be the norm, it could be the default super you're in, all of these things stack up massively because they're amplified by the compounding of time. It's not just investment returns they get compounded over time. Fees also compound over time. And people are so unaware of that. And so I felt duty bound as I was doing my research to be able to point out pathways so that uh, readers of our book uh, and, 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 and people that apply the, the, the game plans that we have in there are able to save themselves significantly on fees. And so instead of that 10 years of retirement savings going in fees, that 10 years of retirement savings going towards your retirement, which is what your intention was. And that level of transparency, I think, you know, is, is so critically important uh, as part of this journey. And it was a, it was a major, um, I guess, foundational plank in the deck of writing that book too. It's actually horrific when you start seeing some of the mis misbeliefs that people have and how they're sort of, you know, they're not widely publicized. Saving is as good as a profit, right? Saving as you is as good as a profit, absolutely. So can we get now, A.B., just a little bit of a sneak peek on maybe the structure of what's included in the book, but more importantly, what the other benefits to the readers are with that? Look, I think, as I say, the, the, the structure is to give people a practical game plan that, that, that's written in plain English. And I can't stress how important it is. It's written in plain English so that anyone of any academic standing, anyone of any language background can pick it up and get a pretty good understanding of, of, of what's going on in there. I think the other um, pointer for me was that I wanted to provide an access point for people irrespective of where they are in life because some people, perhaps like yourself, get started young and, and have a very, very good plan right off the bat. Others maybe get started when they're a little bit older and don't know where to start. And because they don't know where to start, it's, it's too hard, we'll just leave it. You have the people that are older still and feel that they've left their run too late. And the structure of the book is designed so that wherever you are on that journey, you've got a very, very clear place to get started. Whether you're 50, 
and you're renting and you don't own a property and you don't have that much in retirement savings or whether you're 20 and you're just finishing school and you're looking to kick your life off or anywhere in between, uh, there's an access point for you to come in so that you can see from day one, literally, these are the things I need to start doing as of now to work toward getting back on track. And I know reading the the draft copies, this is literally start to finish. It goes from as simple as budgeting and saving all the way through to investing property, shares, everything in between, right? That's right. I mean, if you if you sort of think about the idea of budgeting and having a budget, a lot of people, for example, see that's been quite punitive, yet a budget is the foundation of any level of success, whether that's running a business because you've got to have your P&L, cash flow, all those different things, or whether it's running your own life where you've got to have that net surplus at the end of the week or the end of the month. And tragically, in today's economy, there are so many families out there that are living literally week to week or month to month. Um, and it's not necessarily their fault. You know, interest rates have gone up dramatically, which has really impacted on household budgets, what they've got to spend. But also, I think we're in a society that's been geared up where there's been, and I, I, I know we've talked about this extensively in this podcast, where I think there's been predatory lending from buy now, pay later type organisations where people either want or need things now, and they're prepared to to take it on the knock and pay it off over time. Whereas with the benefit of hindsight, you probably think I could probably have done without that and kept the cash. So getting budgeting under control right at the start, it doesn't have to be punitive. You cannot be a successful investor unless you have capital saved to work with. Also, you can't get out of the horrific pain of living week to week or month to month if you don't have an emergency fund of some savings. And again, yeah, there'll be people out there that perhaps are listening to this going, well, that's right for them. They can afford to save. If you get your budget right, even if it's only a very, very small amount a week that you're able to put away over a period of time, that will grow because compounding ensures that your money grows. But it's also helping you build good financial muscle memory where maybe you ease off on your spending a wee bit and you're able to um, to, to plump up that savings account so you finally have an emergency fund that covers a week of expenses initially or a month of expenses so that if something happened and your income was turned off, you can ride out that period of time. And there are people that don't have that capacity right now, but with some simple practical steps certainly could implement it. We move that out to quarterly. And then once you've got three months of emergency fund, you've already shown you've got the muscle memory for saving. And now instead of having savings for a rainy day or an emergency, you can start to create a savings and investing plan to start building your future. But you have to put the horse in front of the cart. You've got to build the muscle memory to get to that level before you start into the next and so on. So then we start on the investing journey and we explore things ranging from the stock market through uh, to the property market, whether that's a primary place of residence or whether it's an investment property. There are checklists and things to help you with your decision making there. Getting into structuring so that your assets are protected and your tax structure is minimized as much as you can within the guidelines of the law. And then, of course, provisioning for risk, be that risk of retirement without enough money or the risk of uh, losing a job and having no income or life insurance and all of the the less sexy stuff, which go a long way to creating financial peace of mind for people. And they also go towards creating legacy. If you have a family, you know that you're not leaving the family in a pickle if you happen to die. You're leaving them in good standing and, and, and you've been a, a good provider, which for, for many, many people is a, is a very, very important um, value to carry, I suppose. So all of that and much, much more. I love it. And as you always seem to say, you know, success leaves clues and it doesn't happen on accident. So if you can build out that process and deliver it to our listeners and our viewers out there, happy days, Frank. Yeah, a hundred percent. And as I say, you know, 25 years, a lot of time with people. And I think, you know, and I've had the privilege of mixing with some significantly wealthy people, you know, in the billionaire camp. And I've also had the privilege, and it is, and I don't say that just to to be honorary, of seeing people that are very much not in that camp that really are struggling to ride two happiness together. And the privilege of working with those people is when you see that light bulb go on and they recognize that trying to do this on your own is is very difficult. Yeah, it's easier to do nothing than to do something. And uh, and a lot of it just seems too big a mountain to climb if you're in a really difficult position financially and, uh, and the notion of financial freedom or independence or security, yeah, it's so far removed from the day-to-day strain that you're living under. Well, it doesn't have to be that way because number one, you're not on your own. And as you say, success leaves clues. And there are different things that we've picked up along the way. You can say, look, don't try and nut this out yourself. 
just start doing these baby step things right now. And as you start to see things grow, it's going to give you momentum. You're going to feel good in yourself because even though you're not financially free, you're actually taking positive steps towards that, which is going to reinforce what you've done, make you want to do more of it. We go through this in a goal setting workshop so that you, you, you're you fueling yourself effectively. It becomes this perfect motor where the, the small little micro successes you're having encourage you to want to have bigger ones and start to really build that momentum up. And I think once people have got a level of clarity of what they want and they've got a game plan in order to get there, and perhaps most importantly, there's some fuel in the engine because they feel better about themselves that they're not in, and I'll be careful with this phrase, a, a, a phase or a stage in life where they've got learned helplessness, they just feel underwater, they can't come up for air. And there are people listening to this that will know exactly, and I've been in that position, it's an awful feeling. And all of a sudden, every now and then you come up for a gasp of air and you're alive again. And you can then start to go, I'm getting this, I'm getting this. And then suddenly, you know, you're up to your waist out of the water and then beyond that, you can stride out of it. It starts with those simple steps. And the fulfillment over the years I've gotten from being in auditoriums and sometimes people will sit back after an event and say, oh, could I talk to you for a minute? And, and, and you have those one-on-one -on -one conversations with them and hear where they're at. And, oh, I wish I'd met you 10 years, 20 years ago, whatever it might be. You know. So well, we're meeting now. And so let's talk about what the plan needs to look like literally from now. And to see the change in posture and body language or tonality, how they feel about themselves when they've made an affirmative decision to change the story that they're living in, that, oh, we're broke, it's never going to be any different, to, look, we're not in a great position now, but we've got a plan to get out of it is huge. And that is, on its own, one of the most liberating and fulfilling experiences you can have. So you talk about giving back, that's what people like that give back to me when I have those conversations by distilling it down into the Wealth Playbook. Yeah, as I say, get onto the, the landing page, thewealthplaybook.com.au, go grab yourself a copy and you'll see you know, exactly what I mean. And it's, it is incredibly fulfilling when you see that, but it requires people to start. Getting started is always the hardest thing because where do you start? Well, this book, The Wealth Playbook, is designed very specifically to give you a transparent and clear way uh, of being able to get yourself up and running uh, without any doubt so you can commit fully to it. And at the end of the day, life is short. And if you want to get something out of it, you do have to commit fully to it, Mitch. Absolutely, AB. And the book is out maybe, is it a week or so until the book's out? Is that About correct? a week from now, yeah. And, and look, someone said to me the other day, how come, you know, why have you waited until now to write a book? And I've got plenty of opportunities. You know, we've written some of the biggest selling courses in, in, in the country, in our space, in the trading and investing space. And I've had plenty of opportunities to write books in the past. And and I haven't done it because my view of writing a book, particularly in our area of trading, is that whatever you put in the book is just going to be out of date by the time that it's, it's published. And so you're giving people a really blunt tool to try and use in an environment that requires yeah, a pretty sharp knife. And so I've always left it um, as an idea that's been sitting in my ticklers file for yeah, probably 15 years, I would say, maybe a bit longer than that. So I guess, you know, why now? What's different now? Because it's still a book. Well, it is, but I've got a lot more experience in what we've, we've chosen to put in it. But perhaps more importantly than that, the book comes with an online learning companion. So the idea of the book is that the, the time-tested stuff that we talk about in there will stand the test of time. It'll be as good a read in 20, 30, 40 years' time in terms of the principles of making wealth gotcha. as it is today. What changes is the way that you need to apply that in the current market. So readers of the book will get um, complimentary free access to her online learning companion, which is all about, okay, so you've learned about the theory of how this works and the practical steps of doing it. This is how this works right now in this current environment. And the online world has created a great way to ensure that the information you provided is absolutely current as of the B of the bang. The book is the structure set in stone. And then this is the update as to, for example, if rules on investment properties change, um, these are how they will affect you. Got you. Or yep. the tax laws have changed within super and it's now this, or um, you, know, you can't claim life insurance as a tax deduction over here, but you can here now. So it's designed to ensure that people are working with a very, very good roadmap and then a very current um, tutor, coach, mentor, uh, to go alongside it. So yeah, thewealthplaybook.com.au, that's where all that stuff is. And you can get access to that as a reader to run the two in parallel to ensure that you get a ton of other resources in there as well. I think the difficulty, Mitch, when you've accumulated as much experience as, as, as I have, and you know, it's not about just teaching, this is a life I've lived. I've gone from being a pretty poor working class kid growing up in a very poor working class town in the UK to becoming a multimillionaire. It hasn't happened by accident. 
And so all of those different stages of learning that I've gone through and also some of the disasters I've been through on my learning journey are reflected in there so that that experience can be a great teacher. It's a lot cheaper and it's a lot quicker to get when it's somebody else's. So it's all laid out there, black and white. And uh, I think it's a really, really exciting time for, for our ecosystem, our clients to be able to look at areas beyond our traditional space of trading and investing and, and pushing that same rock solid ma- sort of message of learning, becoming confident and being informed about your decision making across all areas of finance, whether that be budgeting, whether it's savings, whether it's your insurance, your super, uh, your other investing strategy, property decisions, all of that. Because ultimately, educated people make smart decisions. Choosing where to get your education from, look, there's been more information out there in the environment now than ever before. None of it's really cohesive. The Wealth Playbook is a total top to bottom, put it all together and then have that online companion there gives you a bulletproof strategy that you can use to win the game of money and the game of life, I suppose. Beautiful. Well, thewealthplaybook.com.au. Jump on there if you're listening to this. Might have to borrow a copy off you, AB, if that's okay. Might sign one for you. Then I'll feel like a real tool. Yeah, <laughs> oh, yeah there you go. Who do I make the dedication to? Yeah. <laughs> that's the funny side of all this. I mean, it, 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 it is really confronting. I mean, I, I know we've we've enjoyed amazing success in the trading space and popularity and, and, and exposure and, and all of that stuff. This is different. Uh, and this one is it's certainly, I've enjoyed it. It was very confronting at the start, I'll be honest with you, because um, you just think, well, do you have anything of value to really say? And I guess by the you know, tens of thousands of people that consume this podcast, for example, we know that there are people that, that, that consume what we've got to say. And I guess rather than having it in a really fragmented way, it's a way of laying it out in a total top-to-bottom bulletproof game plan for people. So, yeah, it's been a really confronting situation and I, I kind of don't know how I'm going to feel when I actually see the first box of these things come through and you go well you did it and it's a bucket list thing for me too actually uh, and so I'm, I'm pretty happy that uh, it's something I can something I can achieve off my bucket list and create space for something new and I guess it's a win-win because it helps me get it off my bucket list and it's certainly going to help the readers of that book um, you know hopefully expand their bucket list by having more time more money more freedom more choice to do the things in life that are important to them. Beautiful. Pre-order now and very much so. Thank you, AB, for your time today. Absolute pleasure. Anytime, Mitch. And guys, enjoy the book. It's a cracking read and uh, hope you get a lot out of it. There you have it, guys. Make sure you like, comment, subscribe. Most importantly, hit that notification button. And if you haven't done so already, make sure you order your copy, www.thewealthplaybook.com.au. Make sure you consume that and get yourself well tracking for your financial freedom.